Welcome to Smash Knits. I'm Ash, aka Smash, and this is podcast episode one. So this is my first ever knitting podcast. Um, I know everyone and their mum has a knitting podcast, but I thought, you know, I'm a beginner knitter, so I wanted to come on here and kind of you know, share my opinions, share what I'm doing as someone who's a, you know, newer to the knitting community. Um, I don't really know how all of this is going to be structured or how we're going to do this. I don't know if we're, if I'm going to have like every episode be like, yeah, like an episode of a podcast or if we're going to go into just like doing individual videos. I don't know. I also don't know how long this is going to be, but we're just going to ramble on until we get somewhere. So welcome i'm excited for you to come on this journey with me and i'm hoping that you are entertained <laughs> in some sort of way so i think we're going to start with my works in progress my current whips that i am doing um and then i thought we would work into like um like my finished objects or well, actually yeah my finished objects and then we'll go into kind of plans i have for knitting slash um yarn i've recently purchased uh, and then we'll go from there all right so let's start with what i am currently knitting well that's a literal current but let's what i've recently most recently cast on this is the um the Hipster Hat by Petite Knit, and I'm knitting it in Sandness Garn Double Sunday in uh, the colour That Orange Feeling. Um, this <laughs> this yarn is quite expensive to get into in Australia, so um, I had been saving it for a day where I just, like, I had a bad day or things weren't going right uh, to kind of cheer me up. Um, it kind of started with... Uh, I was knitting this other jumper, well it's cardigan that you'll see later, and I found a hole in it, so, and because it has mohair in it, it's like a bit annoying, you can't really like frog it, so I kind of had to knit, unknit some of the parts so that I could fix the hole, and it was just like taking so long, and I was just like so unmotivated, but I was like trying to push through it because I have a bad habit of like when things go wrong, just to kind of chuck them into like the whip graveyard and never acknowledge them again until until I finally get up the courage to like address them which is not very common I tend to just throw them and leave them and pretend they don't exist <laughs> it's easier for me to deal um but I decided no I'll like power through it I was getting a bit tired so I thought you know I'll knit on a sock which you'll also see in a second um, and I lost the cable needle for that sock, so I couldn't knit on that sock either. So I was kind of having a bad day, and earlier in the morning, I'd actually tried to cast on a project, and it just went horribly wrong, so everything was going really, really, really wrong, and I had specifically been saving this yarn so that I could, you know, save <laughs> save my mood and um, feel a bit good, and I'm really excited um, for the colour. It looks so good. I really love it. Um... It's really orange. It's like a burnt kind of orange, but it's like a bright burnt orange, if that makes sense. Um, this was actually my first ever time doing a tubular cast on as well. And I think it turned out really well. I really love how even it is and how nice it looks and just like how it matches the ribbing really perfectly. Um, I followed, there's quite a few like YouTube tutorials on how to do a um tubular cast on and i watched the one by very pink knits she has really good tutorials on all different types of like stitches everything like that and even though like there are ones that don't require you to do like you know any crocheting or like a provisional cast on or anything like that i found that even though like there was more steps in the cast on than some other tutorials I found it much easier to do the steps if that makes sense so I can imagine it would be quite laborious if you were going to cast on like um like a, a bottom up sweater and you had to do like over 200 stitches I could see how that could just be like just awful um but for a beanie it's kind of perfect first project just try and start um and learn uh a tubular cast and I'm super happy um 
like I started knitting this only a few days ago and I think it'll probably by the end of um the week it'll be done so I'm very excited I am planning on making a um uh like a matching pair of fingerless gloves to go with this and I think that'll look look really really good so excited about that I'm very happy and like I feel like Sanders gun was something that you know it's petite and it's yarn brand and everyone was really talking like a lot of hype about it and when I got when I finally bought the skeins skeins whatever of yarn of it I felt it and I was like oh it's soft but it's like it's soft like it's cool but it's not like the softest I've ever felt but then when I started knitting with it um it was really nice to knit with it feels really cushy and really soft and it is quite luxurious so I must say let's give props to that um the next thing the next work in progress that I'm currently doing is called the Woodruff sock by and the patterns by um this handmade life I have knit quite a few of her socks I really like them and a lot of her patterns are sorry my cat just jumped up on the on the cabinet um and um quite a few of hers her patterns are free this pattern is free and I'm knitting it in uh, this is called Chasky by Amano Yarns <laughs> hello what are you doing what are you doing <laughs> um this is bagel she's just gonna join us for a little bit um yeah in this really cool color the color is 1723 it doesn't really have like a you know a color name um but i think it's really coming out really well um i don't know if you can see the cabling um but there's like these lacy patterns and these zigzags and then there's the the kind of the just cable in the middle and I think it looks really, really cool. I'm loving the colour. It's kind of like a pastel uh, Granny Smith apple colour. Um, and I've been finding it's gone past quite quickly because you're only knitting the the cables and the lace on one side of the sock. So this is a stockinette and then that's just normal, which makes it go a lot faster. Um, one of the whips you'll see is also by This Handmade Life. And I really did enjoy knitting it, um, but because the lace pattern was like all the way around, it did kind of um, drag on a little bit. So I'm very excited about these. I'm very happy with it. It's a great pattern. Um, I love all of her patterns. They're really good. And I'm loving this yarn. It's, um, it is a superwash, 60% superwash merino wool, 30% pima cotton and 10% linen. So it is a sock yarn, um, but it just doesn't have any nylon in it. But I've made socks in it before and I haven't had any issues so um, with it wearing. So I think that'll be fine. Uh, last whip we've got going is a big one. So this is, this is, let me grab it. This is the, oh gosh, okay, it's stuck. There we go. This is the Novice Cardigan. I don't know if you can see that very well. It's very hard to show cardigans on the toe. Um, by Petite Knit. I wonder if I can... Yeah. Does that, does that show it better? <laughs> um, and uh, it's the Mohair Edition. So it's like an 8-ply. And I'm knitting it in these two which is Rosarius for Marion and this is a hundred percent merino wool and then I'm pairing it with Gephard uh, Kid Setter which is 70% Super Kid uh, Mohair and 30% Silk so knitting those two together I got this yarn and I got the Amano the green yarn um, from Lumen Spindle which is my local 
Wool store here in Frankston and I'm just in love with the colors as soon as I saw the colors actually as soon as I saw this come out of its plastic it hadn't even been on the shelf I immediately grabbed it and I thought these two would pair brilliantly together and I was right <laughs> well I like to think I'm right because I am just loving how this is looking like I'm loving the fuzz I'm loving the purple it's like not kind of like too bright but it's just bright enough um, it's lovely and the actual fabric it makes is so soft and nice this is my first cardigan um, I've ever made and it's coming along really well I'll see if I can chuck it on for you so you can kind of see how far I've come and what it kind of looks like Let's... okay so you can kind of see there that's kind of what it's looking like at the moment this one is around like a circular yoke so it doesn't have any short row shaping in the back you just increase ev like every kind of little section and then um, you just keep knitting down until you need get the length that you want and then you knit the sleeves and then um, you do the button band so um, yeah I'm really loving it I have a bust measurement of 127 centimeters um, and I picked the 3XL size uh, I wanted this to kind of be a little bit like baggy and the 3XL size was between like I think the bust measurement recommendation was if you had a bust between 120 and 130 centimeters so I kind of thought I'll have enough ease um, if that's how it's sized. I like petite knit patterns. One, because they're quite straightforward and I'm a beginner. I've only been knitting since uh, last October and they are size inclusive. Most of the patterns you'll see on my channel will be size inclusive just because, you know, that I need to um, use patterns that are size inclusive. So um, it really frustrates me when they're not. I feel like in this day and age, like it's, it's, shouldn't be um shouldn't be so hard to write a size inclusive pattern but is what it is I guess sometimes but I'm really really loving it um I'm so excited to finish it right now I am just like knitting the body so it is kind of taking forever but I'm trying to like push through it um yeah but we'll see we'll see how we'll see I might have to do a sleeve just to kind of entertain myself for a bit um, but yeah so those are my current whips that I've got going on um, and then we've got uh, some finish objects which is always fun so these here um, I'll, hold them, I'll just get these looking good I have already worn these so if they look a bit misshapen it's because I I have already worn these um but these are the um the wildflower and honeycomb socks by this handmade life I think this is also um I'm not sure if this is a free one or not um but these are so gorgeous I've knitted these in spun right round uh tough sock in the color tangy yeah everything that i mentioned also will be like mentioned down below or linked below so that you can access it all easily um in case i forget something um so it's got this really pretty lace pattern all the way through these little flowers and then the heel is kind of this really cool um honeycomb shape it's like it's like got these little honeycombs in it you can't really tell like um far away but when you look up close it is like a, a nice honeycomb and I really love the color like I'm I actually was really um grateful to be gifted this yarn um by my friend Kim um for one of my various you know events birthdays Christmases whatever um and I really really love it uh I did block these <laughs> and knit these very far apart I think I knitted one and then about oh, probably six months later I needed the other so they are a bit different in size I should have probably blogged them together but um I got I got 
stranded on Sock Island for a bit. So I might just have to re-block these, do it together. I actually think I've blocked these on two different sock blockers. Well, who knows? We'll see. It's alright. No biggie. I've already worn them too, so they're comfy. I like them. <laughs> Another one. Next. Okay. So, the next whip, not whip, when I finish object that I'm going to talk about is the Sophie Shawl by Petite Knit. Um, this I knit in um, DK Merino by Woolen Wax. She is an Australian dyer. Her, uh, Chloe is her name. And she's really cool because she's an engineer and she hand dyes yarn. Um, I used three skeins of this this one so that you can see um three skeins of this and um it was look my first time making a shawl um it was it was fine look the first time I knit this up I the great thing about this pattern about the Sophie shawl is that you can doesn't really matter whatever like amount of yarn or yardage of yarn that you have you pretty much like weigh all of your yarn together and then you like once you like you just like start from the end increase and then once you get halfway through your yarn you just start decreasing and then you can use up all your yarn for one project and you won't have any left over and you'll have this beautiful shot I didn't correctly measure my yarn at the start so I ran out about this much left of this shawl um, and this got thrown into the whip graveyard. It did, it did. It got, it got absolutely just slam dunked into the whip graveyard and I literally shoved it in there. I didn't want to hear about it. I didn't want to look at it. I was so mad that I had gotten that far and this was one of my earlier projects so I wasn't as fast of a knitter so this was taking me a while to get through because I was like learning how to do certain increases and, and decreases and how to do the eye cord edging and all at the same time so <laughs> when I when I got that far into the project and then had like four inches left and I ran out of yarn and you can't like I couldn't buy more of it um I was so mad I was pissed so I really was, you know, not in the mood to ever see it again. But um, at my local yarn store, um, one of the lovely ladies there said that, you know, frogging back is taking control. And I really like resonated with that. So I went home and I and I decided to frog this. And um, I, gr I decided to frog the whole thing because with hand dyed yarn, it is beautiful. And there's so many like unique colors. I think that's what makes it really special but one thing is is that like obviously it's very hard to get consistency especially with like variegated or like very speckly yarn so one of the skeins was like very pink so, and then the other two were really orange so the way I had originally knit it I had knit it like using the pink skein first and then the other two orange and it looked really weird like it it just looked really uneven so at least frogging the whole thing back gave me an opportunity to like like split the pink skein and do that on the ends and then do the orange in the middle so at least so and I really love it like I got so many compliments on it and um I actually went to like a craft noon um earlier in the week where Chloe um kind of ho like hosted it and I wore it there and she was really happy to see her yarn being used and so that was really cool that was a really nice moment because like a lot of the time you don't get to like meet the dyer of the yarn um, unless you're like at a show or something like that so it was really special I really like that and I'm really warm like so comfy I'm super happy with it it's super soft and the more I wear it it gets softer and softer so I'm super super duper happy with how this looks and I probably would make another one like it's I probably would definitely so that's really nice all right so now we're gonna get into some recent purchases of yarn which happens quite frequently <laughs> I can't help myself Ugh. especially I bought quite a bit of yarn from Woolen Works um, 
at the craft dinner and I didn't know she was going to be selling it. So when she was, I was like, oh, I'm like, I had mad FOMO and I had to, and I, had to, and I got a lot. I went crazy. I went too far. Um, I have no self-control. Like, it's the same thing. Like, one, probably in the future, probably like the, like the near future, I'll do like, um, <laughs> like digging up my way, like my whip graveyard so that you can see just like how bad it really is. Like, it's bad. I just like, as soon as I make a mistake, I'm just like, nah, it's gone. I don't want anything to do with it. I just don't have the patience to fix things. <sighs> it's not a good habit. Anyway, let's start with what I've been kind of teasing over on this side. So this is the DK Merino by Woolen Works. And it's in this amazing, just like really bright, like, it's like hot pink, but like a cool tone hot pink. So it's kind of like a mix in between like a like a, a hot pink and a neon pink and I saw it straight away and I just immediately just oh my eyes um, and I just kind of saw it and I was like oh that would be really cute it's kind of like a slutty pink um if a pink could be slutty it would be this pink um uh, and my plan was to make a cardigan with it however um I soon realized that I didn't buy enough yarn so we're pivoting and we're gonna make the Friday vest by petite knit in this and I think that's gonna be really fun I have a lot of pink in my wardrobe or I have a lot of outfits with pink in my wardrobe so I think this will suit really well um, over like dresses or um, you know just like a white shirt or a t-shirt I think it'll look really cute and I'm just loving it it's super soft I've used this yarn before in my Sophie shawl so I know how nice it is to use I'm very excited to start that project while we're at it, we'll just do all the Woolen Works yarn. I've got a lot. Um, I will go this one here. Okay, this one. Oh yeah, I should have said what color this was. San Fran flowers. Oh, that's so cute. Anyway, um, this one here is another DK Merino. Um, these are all the Woolen Works ones are Superwash Merino, so they are very soft. Um, and all they are all 225 meters in yardage this colorway is called together again i saw this and kind of associated with barbie like i know that pink is also very barbie and i originally wanted to do a cardigan and do like contrasting cuff and like collar in this color because it has like a bit of the pink in there and i thought that would look look really cute um but because i don't have enough yarn to do a cardigan I think I will just make some sort of accessory like a beanie or like a beanie or maybe some fingers gloves or something like that out of it because I think the pink would look really nice with the vest um, I don't really want to make a scarf out of it I don't think really I have enough but I definitely want to make some sort of accessory out of it because it's it's just such a cute just such a cute color it's so pretty with the pinks and the blues and I don't really gravitate to bright blues but I was just giving very Barbie and Ken, and I feel like with the Barbie movie out, I was just really feeling it. I was feeling it. Next, we'll change it up. We'll go for a um, a fingering weight. So this is the fingering sock. This is 80% Australian superwash and 20% uh, nylon. And this is, again, by Woolen Works. Like I said, I had bought all of these on the craft afternoon. Um, this is called Birthday Balloons. And this is such a pretty kind of like faded, like the, it's like pastel, but it like fades into the other colors. It is really, really nice. Um, it's beautiful. I am going to make a sock out of this. I'm actually going to make the Cider House sock by, uh, what's her name? Uh, Samaliko. And this is going to be for my mum. So, hopefully my mum doesn't see this. Uh, it doesn't matter. She knows I'm making her a sock. It's fine. I'm going to make her this, um, like the side of house sock in this colorway. I'm not going to do like the cuff with the stripes in it. I'm just going to do a cuff in this color and then do the rest in this color as well. I think because it's such a light kind of fade, um, the cabling will show up really well. Um, and you get 400 meters in this and they're just, just so soft. It's so soft and this, and it's so beautiful. I actually, I actually, I 
I bought one for my mum and then I immediately went back and bought one for myself because they're so pretty and I was going to be really jealous if my mum got this and I didn't have one too. So, it's what it is. <laughs> Lastly of the Woolen Works. I know, I know, it's like going on forever. What am I sponsored by Woolen Works? No, but do I love that yarn? Yes. Um, this colour is called Me as a Bird. Um, again, in the DK Merino. And I just, I can't with these colours. Oh my god. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. I love, I love these colors. Like, I love these colors. Um, there's oranges. It's like pastel. It goes into like the pastel pinks. It's got the blues. It's got the purples. It's just, it's divine. I have no idea what I'm going to make with it. I don't want to make a beanie. I have so many beanies and I just like don't wear them as much as I should, even though... I have lots of bad hair days and I probably should wear a beanie, but I just don't use them as much. And I don't want another Sophie scarf. I have made one before and I rarely wear it. Um, the Sophie shawl is a bigger size. I really like that. I like a bigger scarf. But again, I just, I, there was only one of these and I don't have enough to make that. So maybe some fingerless gloves. <laughs> maybe some fingerless gloves. Because um, it's just so lovely. It's really lovely. Alrighty, moving on to non woolen work <clears throat> yarn. Um, this is the Rosarius for, um, I don't know if it's Maya, Mia, Maya, Maya. It's sock yarn. It's in this kind of beigey kind of color. It's like mm, brownie beige. It's coming up a bit more yellow, it's a bit more pink toned in person. Um, and this is. 70% merino, 30% uh, polyamide, and it's in the colorway 06. <laughs> um, these I'm planning on making the Fairy Maiden socks by This Handmade Life. I think that's a free pattern as well. Um, and I think that'll be really sweet. I've had that pattern actually for a while. Um, tried making it with a different yarn. Um, actually, this this woolen works yarn that's called pink petal pie and this is gorgeous but I just couldn't see any of the cabling like I couldn't see anything like I was pre I might as well just knit a vanilla sock because I couldn't see shit um and which is really annoying because I really want to use this but I have no idea what to do with it it's so pretty I just don't know what to do with it um so I thought this would be better a bit more plain to be able to see the beautiful kind of cable lace detail in it Next, I got this Rosarius for um, TEC, which is called Total Easy Care. Now, this is 100% wool, but it's been treated so that you can like wash it in the washing machine. Um, sorry, but it doesn't say it's super wash wool. It just says it's wool. Um, it's super soft. It's really nice. And it's kind of, this is kind of more that like bubblegum pink, like pastel bubblegum pink. And with this... Um, I'm going to, oh yeah, it's in color 04. Um, and I bought the Rosario, both these, at Loom and Spindle in Frankston. Uh, they have an online store, so if you're not in Frankston, but you are in Australia, you can just order this online. They're really great there. Shout out to Andrea. I love you, girl. Um, this is DK Weight. Did I say that about the other one? That's fingering. This is fingering. This is DK Weight. Um... You, it's a 50 gram skein and you get, God knows, 125 meters per skein. And I'm going to knit the Mauricia cardigan by, I don't know how to pronounce her name and I don't want to butcher her name because it looks like a lovely name. So I'm just going to put it below. Um, I saw Knits by Mandy make this in... Dusty Artichoke by Knitting for Olive and it was I loved the kind of faux cabling I, I thought it was so gorgeous I really wanted one for myself but I am not ready to invest in knitting for Olive yet just because the shipping to Australia is mad expensive so I just and I can't justify um also I'm very impatient so I just couldn't imagine how long it would take to get here um even though by the time I finish all my other whips, I probably will get here in time. I'm just, I, I really want to. I just haven't bitten that bullet yet. 
even though everyone says really great things about it. Anyway, I try to shop local when I can. This, I wanted to do like a bright color. Again, I'm going like a pink. I have a lot of pink in my wardrobe and I have a lot of things with pink in it. So I feel like this would match really well. And I wanted a light color so that you could really see the faux cabling. I think it's just so pretty. I'm very excited for that. I've kind of like started this cardigan and I've got like cardigan brain. And I just want to do more and more and more. Um, and then finally, I've got this one here. This is the, again, this is the Payuma um, by Dying House Gallery. And this is 100% extra fine merino wool in this really beautiful color. Um, and what is the color actually? Lily of the Valley. Oh, that's so nice. And it's so soft. I got this also from Lumen Spindle. And it's so squishy. I've never knit with kind of this like roving like yarn before. And my plan to with this one is to knit the uh, the Millstone Collar by Marita Rothwell. Um, Marita is the mother of Andrea who owns Loom and Spindle and I'm very excited. This is thinner yarn, like the gauge for this yarn is um, smaller than what she's got in the pattern but I'm just going to hold it double to make the collar and I think it's going to look really really nice. I love this colour, I think it looks good with my brown hair and I think it's going to look really really well work really well and I think that's everything actually I think that's all I have to share um yeah so thank you so much for joining me on my first podcast this is exciting and it is new so I might be a bit rough so if I'm kind of like not looking at the camera or things are a bit all over the place or I haven't mentioned anything um everything all information will be linked down below or will be up on the screen and um hopefully i get just like more into doing this and i'll be releasing more episodes in the future so thank you so much for listening and i'll see you next time